This is Olga Kirschenbaum with nine minutes of Creative Wisdom Podcast, where creatives share their wisdom. It is six questions in nine minutes because creatives have a short attention span. So let's get to it. In a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. Ooh, I'm Jeff Perry. I run Rediscover Your Play, where I combine positive psychology and play to help teams navigate really difficult conversations like dealing with toxicity at work and how to get into your flow and how to deal with your inner critic and all those things like that. Um, as for who I am, the quickest way of saying it is I saw big as a kid. I started writing toy companies in third grade. I got in the toy industry. I hated it. I left New York, moved to the Bay, started playing with Legos uh, in this STEM job and grew it into like this ridiculously really big STEM organization all by playing. And uh, through that, I realized like play is like the answer to solve so many problems. Um, and then I started collaborating with a lot of tech companies that weren't playing. And now I help a lot of companies around the country that to basically create a psychologically safe space so their employees can play more. I love that. Uh, one of my biggest things for 2020 was just to have more fun. And every time I led anything with that, magic would happen. Right? Right? Absolutely. And, there's and there's something amazing. Like, so I, I pride my day by doing a TikTok to start the day. Like I make these stupid, silly TikTok videos. No ROI value, no product. <laughs> it's just for me. But it primes my day to see the whole day as play. And my friend Desiree taught me this really interesting trick where she, you ask yourself when something good happens, how can it get any better than this? With like mm. curiosity, not yearning, because a lot of adults are so focused on like results and expectations of the thief of joy. But just like ask yourself, how can it get any better than this? And, and when you positively prime your mind to look for that, from a psycho psychology standpoint, you're looking for those patterns. So like, I think of it as like, ooh, how can I get it better than this? I made this video, ooh, how can I get it better than this? Oh, I just hopped on this play podcast earlier today. Ooh, how can I get any better than this? Now, Olga and I are talking, let's go. We connected about Brooklyn. How can I get any better than this? I get to see my family in a moment. So it's like, when you are able to do that, you can actually shift your entire day. And when a lot of people say, I had a bad day, I challenge that because I'm like, what you had was a bad moment because thoughts only last between nine seconds and 90 seconds, but you ruminated about that bad moment. And if you could simply instead shift it to ask yourself, how can it get any better than this? You could shift your entire day. Powerful, especially important these days. So what is your favorite part about being a creative leader? I get paid to be me. Mm. That is my favorite part. And isn't that what we all want anyway, <laughs> right? Absolutely. You also, know, I think, oh, go ahead. Another thing that came up for me in 2020, I made it my motto, I am going to get paid to be myself. And first thing that happened after I started declaring this, I had a photo shoot in my house and I got paid for it. And it was to promote my business. And it, I was approached for, I was like, how can I get any more than me right. to be captured in my habitat as a freelancer in my own home? <laughs> and there's something powerful about like, you know, my people might quote and be like, oh, that's a bad manifestation stuff is woo woo. But no, from a, from a positive psychology standpoint, whatever words come after I am, mm. if you keep saying them over and over to yourself, you are, you are creating patterns in your brain to look for those opportunities. And the thing that, that this, this is the whole growth mindset of, of playing, right? And the powerful part also of like, I want to get paid to be me is like one of the biggest regrets of the dying mm. people that are on their deathbed is I wish I had the courage to live the life that I wanted to live, not the life that others expected of me. And it's just like, how many people do you know that are currently chasing their worth, like looking for validation from others. 
and like basically redoing high school all over again. I feel like we did high school in high school, then we did it in college, now we're doing it at work. It's just like, I'm tired of trying to impress Chad, the cool guy. Who cares about Chad? I won't care about him in five years. And we really have to ask ourselves like, am I doing things, when am I doing things for me? Like, when does this feel right for me? And when do I feel like I'm doing this for somebody else that frankly I'm not gonna be thinking about in a year? Powerful. So I speak to a lot of creatives who will avoid the money side of their businesses. They'll pretty much do anything to avoid it. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, it's interesting. So I forgot which book. There's a great book, Your Money or Your Life. Amazing book. It has you add up all of the money you've made and then be like, how much money do you have? And you're like, <laughs> oh, you're so mean, you know? Um, but, but there was another book I read that was all about like what your relationship with money is, is based off of your first experience with money when you were like a kid. So like, that's just an interesting like exercise to do. And I don't know, and I, I think I've struggled with it at times. There's, when I was working for like this STEM organization, it was so easy for me to ask for money. I think it's been much harder when I'm representing myself, you know, but when, but for example, the companies have so much money right now. They had, they're not running a lot of events. They're saving a lot of money by not doing all their things that they usually do. And it's just like, you'd be amazed what people are willing to say yes to, right? So like, I've been just tossing out larger and larger numbers of stuff and just being like, and kind of seeing it again, like play, instead of being like, oh no, like I can't ask for too much. Mm. Instead of like, why not? I remember running, when I used to build these gigantic Lego, you know, things, I remember working with this one, one company this corporation who shall not be named, but um, they were like, you know, I was like, oh, how much should I charge them? I was like, how much does it cost to make this? And it was like, maybe like $2,000. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll ask for 3,000. And then I remember when I was in the meeting, I was just like, yeah, um, yeah, I think it's 6,000 for one. And they were like, oh, great. We'll have three of them. And I was like, what? <laughs> Or so like you'd be amazed how like you know I don't think a lot of times with a lot of creatives because we're like well why should I get paid to do this you know I'm just like I'm just doing me like me I shouldn't get paid that much it's like no you do something very rare that a lot of people can't deliver on except for uniquely you so what value does that have so even when I'm talking to businesses now I'll I'll find out what their issue is and then I'll ask them based off of your issue, like a toxic person at work, what value would it be for you to address this issue? Mm. How much would you pay for something like that? And then you'd be amazed what people are will, will say to you. Absolutely. I love this idea of saying, why not? Um, something I tell people I work with is instead of saying, oh, it's too much money, it's too expensive, reframing it to say, well, how can I afford that? How right. can I make that possible? So instead of focusing on the lack, now you're training your mind to think about it from a possibility perspective. And it's right. super, and super also powerful. Addressing, and also addressing their pain point, right? Like how long have you dealt with this pain point? Mm. You know, when I tell businesses that a toxic, like $223 billion has been lost by Fortune 500 companies alone in the last five years because of a toxic person, I'm like, how much is that toxic person costing you? Would you like to address this? Okay, how much would you be willing to pay for something like that? And it's interesting to see where they're like, oh, I never thought of it that way, you know? Right, so. beautiful perspective. So who are the creatives that you admire or have inspired you on your journey? There's a few different ones that I really love. There's, there's uh, a play mentor of mine, Kevin Carroll, I love this guy. He used to be the creative catalyst for Nike. Um, and he was just like this dude that that basically tells the story of how a red rubber ball saved his life and how he would play this with this red rubber ball. And basically then he got it got um, to become the assistant coach for the 76ers, you know, later on because of this red rubber ball. And then later on, because he went to the military and learned Yugoslavian at the time, that was still the language that that, that country still existed, you know, that he started talking trash to Vlade Divac once while he was, while he was on the 76ers 
And then Vlade offered him to be on um, their Olympic team as the translator. So it's just like, oh, cool. Like, you know, there's just so many cool, creative people like that. So Kevin Carroll, I really love. Um, a thought leader I really appreciate is uh, Gay Hendricks. He talks a lot about self-sabotage and what is your zone of genius? You know, when I tell people like, oh, I don't play enough. It's just like, well, what is, what is the work where you forget about time? You know, what is the work where if someone, someone wasn't paying you, you would do that work anyway. That's your zone of genius. How do we spend more time in that zone of genius? Because if you're doing that flow work and you increase it, even if you increase it from 10 to 15% more, it'll have this ripple effect on everything else you do. So that's been really powerful. And, and I've been reading up on a lot of stuff that Elizabeth Gilbert has been saying. And one of her, my favorite quotes from her is like, you know, personal transformation doesn't happen until you get tired of your own BS. So it's just like, what BS am I telling myself? Back in March of this year, I was telling myself I didn't have time to make videos. And then quarantine happened. It was like, guess what? You have all the time in the world, Jeff. And now I'm making like a video or two videos a day. So it's just like, it's interesting to ask yourself, okay, what is the BS I'm telling myself? And why am I telling that to myself? Oh, is it because I don't want to grow or I'm a little scared? Let me follow my curiosity and break through that fear. Still have the fear, but like sit in it and then get through it by actually taking action and following my curiosity. Powerful. So what is the one piece of wisdom or advice that other creatives should know? Um, there's two. The one that resonates with me most and was revealed in 2020 is nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody <laughs> knows. Everybody's making it up as they go along. And like any gurus that are out there proven, they don't know either. Right. And this is what is so empowering because then it's like, hey, you are the expert of yourself. That's really exciting. You know, you don't need to listen to, you don't need to like follow what Brene Brown's doing or Sean Aker or Simon Sinek. Like, what do you want to do? Like, it, like I tell people a lot when it comes to plays to get bored, like stop listening to social media and, and binge watching Netflix. And I'm not saying forever, just like for an hour, block that out. Because think about when you were a kid, that's, you have your best ideas came when you were bored. And we're getting inundated with more information in a day than people got in the 1950s in an entire year. And all that information is telling you, don't be yourself, buy this Amazon product, do this, do that, but don't do you, right? But if you're able to block that out and get bored and then, and then listen to that intuition, that inner child, it's going to whisper something like crazy and fun and awesome to you. And it's also going to be a little scary, but it'll be like, start a podcast, you know, create that video, reach out to that person you've always been wanting to reach out to. What are your heroes? Like there's so many different things that will come up if you just allow yourself to listen to your inner child because your inner child wants to play with you all the time. It's like, is it time yet? Are we playing now? You know, so it's just like waiting for you and it's always there. And if we simply can block out the noise and stop trying to people please, and, and dive into that joyful place, we'll find out that we actually know all the answers that we need. And I tell this to people all the time, like you have all the answers that you need. Any advice that I say that resonates with you, you've already told yourself this. I'm just reminding you of it, but you already have all these answers. You just simply need to play enough in order to figure it out. That is super powerful. And I know I'll be listening to this one again. So now the most important question of the podcast, Kakaya Vasha Lubima Musica, or in English, what's your favorite music? Oh, what's my favorite music? Oh, Soka. Soka, which is like Caribbean, like new Calypso music. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, and it just like gets you like vibing so fast. But then there's this song right now called Jerusalem. Um, that is just like blowing up, I think on TikTok and stuff like that. I listen to that song all day long because, and it's, and it's been done at a lot of uh, like marches and things like that because it just gets people like amped. I love it. And I'm not surprised. It, it seems to be in line with the whole Jeff vibe. <laughs> right. <laughs> like way too much energy, just like bouncing around all the time. Not too much. I even just have, a perfect like, I even have like stuffed animals within my reach at all time too. 
Love it. Well, thank you, Jeff, for being on. What is the best way for the listeners to connect with you? Absolutely. Uh, yes, this has been super fun. They can actually go to rediscoveryourplay.com, click on the Let's Play button. I have a bunch of play experiments where you can like figure out who you are. Like one of my favorite play experiments is, and do the, oh, you got to do this, is, con, is reach out to three to five of your friends and ask them these two questions. What value do I bring to your life? And when have you seen me come most alive? And when you ask at those questions, you get so much love and, and interesting answers back. And they, they give you a bunch of ideas on how you can play more. So what value do I bring to your life? And when have you seen me like most alive, most playful, most present? Um, yeah, go to rediscoveryour.com, yourplay.com, and you can do all these play experiments and then reach out to me and let's figure out how you can kick ass in this world. Fantastic. And I'll include that all in the show notes. This is Olga Kirschenbaum with nine minutes of creative wisdom podcast where creatives share their wisdom. Make sure you check out my blog at rags to riches consulting.com to get money insights you haven't heard before. See ya.